you will learn how to turn your footage from this to this and give it that nice dreamy mist effect. Everybody can follow along because we're only gonna be using two notes in the Fusion page and it's available in the free version as well as in the studio version. And you can create this effect on any adjustment clip, any Fusion composition or directly on the source clip. Just one thing that you should keep in mind if you wanna create the effect directly on the source clip and you have your clip already colored as I have right here. And if we were to jump into the Fusion page then, you only see the raw or log image. And all you have to do in order to fix that is right click on your clip and turn that into a new compound clip, hit create, and if we were to jump into the Fusion page then, you would see the already colored image. But in this case, I'm gonna use an adjustment clip because I wanna store the effect later on for future use in any project. I'm gonna come up to my effects library in the top left corner, I'm gonna go down towards this effects and grab the adjustment clip and drag it onto my timeline just like so. Then I wanna select the adjustment clip and click on the Fusion page, and this will load up a media in one and a media out one by default. So the notes that we need in order to create this effect are the blur node and the glow node. And you can grab the blur node right from the toolbar up here, just click, drag and hover over this line and once it changes color you can let go of it and that should automatically connect the blur node in between the media in one and the media out one. Now with the blur node selected I'm going to come up to my inspector in the top right corner and I'm going to drag the blur size up all the way and then I'm going to use the blend slider to dial it back and I think around 0.4 is pretty good for this specific clip. However if your clip is different then you wanna play around with the blend slider to get the desired result. I'm gonna leave it at 0.4, and then I'm gonna hit shift spacebar with the blur node selected and type in glow and just add the glow node. And by default, this is gonna look horrible and I want you to make it even worse by increasing the glow size in the inspector all the way to 100. Now we're gonna reduce the glow until we not see any clipping in areas that we don't want to clip. Then we can use the blend slider to blend this effect in just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go down to roughly around 0.13. And then we change the apply mode from normal to threshold. And because I want this effect to appear on the whole screen, I'm gonna grab my high slider and just drag it all the way down to something around here. And you can see if I increase this, just look at the hills in the background, you can see that there is a slide line where we change the effect. So I'm gonna drag this down until we affect the whole image. And that's it. This is a very simple but very efficient way to create that nice dreamy mist effect. And if you want to store this effect for future use, all you have to do is come up to your media pool in the top left corner, click on the power bins. And if you don't see that by default, just click the three dots right here and select show power bins. Now I want you to drag the adjustment clip just into the power bin section. Then you can delete it from your timeline. And now you can just grab the adjustment clip and drag it back onto your timeline, make it as long or as short as you want. And if I'm gonna deactivate it and activate it, you can see the differences that this makes. But if the effect is still a little bit too strong for you, you can always change the global opacity by selecting the adjustment clip, coming up to the inspector in top right corner, then go down to where it says composite and drag the opacity down. And let's go with something around 50 for this clip. But I've already turned this effect into a plugin, which is entirely for free. If you're a channel member, you can download it from the channel members page. If you don't want to do so, you can always go to my website and download it from there. But I'm also gonna give you an example on how this plugin looks and how you can customize it. We have four different effects. We have the Cinemist Extreme, Cinemist Mid, and Cinemist Subtle, who also have the Pro Mist. And I'm gonna showcase you the Subtle one and the Pro Mist one because the mid and extreme one are just variations from the subtle one. This by default is the subtle one. If I'm gonna turn it off and on, you can see the differences this makes. But we also have control over the mist and the glow. So we can dial down the mist strength if this is a little bit too harsh for you, you can turn down the glow and the glow strength right around there. But we also have this threshold that we can increase or decrease to just affect the areas that we want to. But now let's switch to the Promise version because this has a built-in limiter which lets you limit the effect to a specific area based on the luminance values of your image. So if I'm gonna drag the left slider up, you can see that we're only affecting like the brightest parts of our image. And we have a roll off slider to dial this just a little bit back like there. Then we have the softness strength Let's dial this a little bit down and the glow. Let's dial this a little bit down, blend this in a little bit more nicely. And if I'm gonna activate it, 
deactivated and activated, you can see that we only affect like the brightest parts of the image right there. So once again, this is a plugin that is available for free if you're a channel member. And if you're not a channel member already, you might consider becoming one because there's another plugin that I've created for myself out of necessity, and that is the CineGrid plugin. Now I'm fully aware that there is already a grid plugin inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let me just bring this up real quick. If you don't want to use mine, you can always use the built-in from DaVinci Resolve. You just go to Open Effects and search for Grid and drag this onto an adjustment clip. However, this is the built-in one from DaVinci Resolve and I think it's not very user-friendly. You have all of those controls, but Instead, I'm just gonna show you mine. So this is the effect as it's applied. You can see that nothing really changes, but if we wanna come here into the inspector, you can see that we can turn on all the different grids that we're having right there, and you can change all the colors of any different grid. So let's change the safe guides to a nice red, and now you can see the safe guides. So we have a center on, which basically is this big center X, we also have a small center guide, which is this crosshair in the middle. We also have the safe guides, which are the red outlines right here. We have the rule of thirds and we have an eyeline on. And the ones that I use the most are the eyeline ruler, the rule of thirds and the center small. The eyeline ruler is especially helpful if you cut a lot of talking head videos like this one right here or interviews where you have multiple cameras and you wanna to change to a different camera angle. You always wanna make sure that the eyeline remains in the same spot, which means that you can use the center Y and drag this up. Let me just change the color real quick so you can see this a little bit better to a red. And let's just place it on this dude's eyeline right here. So if I'm gonna cut to a different shot right now, you can use this ruler to line up the eyelines from the next shot. Or if you wanna crop into the image, you can also use this eyeline ruler, just place it on top of the first shot and then extend it until you can see it on the second shot and then match your eyelines right there. So you have a consistent eyeline level within your talking head segments or interviews. But once again, this is a plugin that I created for myself out of necessity and I'm gonna make it available for any channel member to download for free as well as the Cine and Promise plugin. But if you're not a channel member and if you don't wanna become one, you can get those plugins individually on my website. But if you don't wanna do so, I totally understand that. Next week's episode, I'm gonna show you how you can create custom grids and guidelines just like that in DaVinci Resolve's Fusion page. And I also have a video completely covering the macro tool, how you can build a plugin like that with all of the custom labels and all of the custom checkboxes. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link to that video in the description of this video. Otherwise, hope this video was helpful to you. And I'm gonna see you next week.